But we begin at the weather map with Al Roker. Al, as if the threat of this potentially historic storm isn't enough, we're already seeing tornadoes. That's right. And this was this is kind of the worst case scenario, Chris, because we were talking about this for the last two days. We were going to see these tornadoes, especially as it approached. And sure enough, that's what's happened. Let's show you what we've got going on right now. As far as our map is concerned, we are looking at a Category 4 storm, 150 miles now southwest of Tampa. It's got 130 mile per hour winds. It's moving northeast at 16 miles per hour. Now, as we look, you can see we have tornado watches now from Daytona Beach all the way down to Key West. We've had reports of 50 tornadoes so far in the last couple of hours, and now we have m numerous, multiple tornado warnings going on to the west, I should say the east of Tampa and Sarasota, to the west of West Palm Beach and right between West Palm Beach and Fort Myers. These are dangerous storms. We've had the last two uh, hurricanes, Chris, have actually produced at least one EF3 tornado. That's never happened before. And uh, we do pr predict that there probably will be another EF3 with this, and that would be really unheard of. And again, in this hatched area, this is where we are going to be looking at tornadoes from this afternoon on into the evening. And the danger with the evening tornadoes, these are rain-wrapped and harder to see and maybe become more numerous as we start to see Milton approaching. Now, as far as landfall is concerned, currently we're thinking it's going to make landfall as a Category 3 storm. Is it, does it matter if it's a Category 3 or a low 4? No. The damage is going to be done because of this with winds of about 120, 125 miles per hour. Now, if it keeps on this track, it'll push water toward the coast and then draw water out of the Tampa Bay on the other side of it. And so for that region, for that reason, we're looking at more troubles for Port Charlotte on into Fort Myers if it stays on this pass. Less so, so much for Tampa Bay and St. Pete. If it moves to the north, this would create really historic storm surge for Tampa Bay and Sarasota uh, at Newport Ritchie, not seeing as much. If it goes to the south, St. Pete, Tampa will be spared, but then Fort Myers to Bonita Springs will be looking at extreme surge impacts as far as this is concerned. So as far as the surges are concerned, we're talking about 8 to 12 feet around Tampa St. Pete, 10 to 15 north of Sarasota, all the way down to Boca Grande, and then another 8 to 12 down to Bonita Springs, even as much as 3 to 5 feet tomorrow as this system exits and we get that return flow. The storm surge, of course, this is where we see the most damage, the most uh, problems, and unfortunately the most fatalities. So these powerful winds start whipping up against the coast. And as those winds drive that water on top of high tides, which uh, tomorrow will be around 6.51 a.m. in Tampa, that water piles up, rising up on and into the land, can go in several miles. And so we're going to be watching that very closely where this is going to set up. Now, as far as the rest of this forecast is concerned, we also have other impacts to talk about. Extreme damage from winds. I mean, we're talking like in the Tampa area, we could see windows blown out of high rises. They've got cranes out there. That could be a big problem as well for all that, all that construction that's going on. Also, with all the winds blowing and trees coming down, we're looking at widespread power outages, Sarasota, Tampa, Fort Myers, on into Vero Beach and Orlando. Some of these could last, these power outages could last for weeks. And then, of course, the rainfall, Chris. We are going to be looking at, I mean, this is going to be epic rainfall, upwards of a foot and a half. Some places may pick up more than that. Uh, this is life-threatening, catastrophic flash flooding with rainfall amounts, generally up to 10 inches, but as we said, could be even higher than that. So this is a storm that has, unfortunately, everything, Chris. It's got tornadoes, it's got storm surge, it's got high winds, and it's got uh, just life-threatening rainfall. And you put that all together, uh, it, it's just really hard to imagine if people are in those areas where they were told to evacuate, that they're going to survive. Help us to, to put that in perspective a little more, Al. Look, very few people have been doing what you do for as long as you've been doing it, 40-plus years. Um, you've seen a lot you've been to a lot of yeah. places and there are comparisons being made to ian most obviously to katrina different kind of storm exactly. but the population density here yeah. is very different as well so give us some perspective over your decades of experience about what the folks in Florida are facing right now. Well, look, I, I, we're, we're not trying to scare people, but we're trying to keep them informed. 
and, and, and safe. And, and, and safe. We haven't seen landfall yet. So, and, and again, when we talk about that path, it can wobble. I mean, we can see a wobble of 10, 15 miles, and that's going to determine where, as we showed you, the storm surge is going to set up. But I can tell you that I don't recall, and, I, and we, we go back in the records, I think we could find it, but I don't recall in this age of satellite uh, uh, reconnaissance of seeing a storm not just rapidly intensify, but extreme rapid intensification over 100 mile per hour increase and a drop in, in pressure in less than 24 hours. It went from it went from 85 miles per hour or 80 miles per hour to 180 miles per hour. And so uh, and now we, it's come back off of some of those those numbers. But make no mistake, when this comes in, even if whether it's a three or a four, I don't care what that is, it's still going to have a major, major impact not just on infrastructure, but probably the topography of that West Coast. Al Roker, you're my lo local weatherman back in the 70s in Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> all these years, you were damn good then for a young kid. Uh, all that experience, we're very lucky to have you. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it, Al.